My heart rate is up. I have been a moving and a grooving already, you guys. It's only 9.30 in the morning and I've already done so much. Um, welcome. <laughs> welcome back to the channel. God, my hair's a mess. I know her. Um, so today we are going to be doing a bunch of little things, some not so little, around the house that kind of need to get done. They're time sensitive. So, um, this year, 2024, is sort of the year that we are, as a family, doing a little bit more of the, of, um, I hesitate to call it the homesteading type of, um, lifestyle but we are spending more time and we are putting forth more effort to make more stuff at home to be more um self-reliant and uh we have if you haven't already seen on my instagram we have tilled up quite a significant part of our backyard and fenced it off to make a backyard garden a big one and this past weekend, my husband and I spent a bunch of time out there with the kids. We were um, using the hoe and the rake to break up the ground even more after it was tilled. We were removing weeds like dandelions and buttercups that had sort of started to creep back in since we tilled it a couple weeks ago. And um, we also got our direct sow seeds in the ground for things that can very easily just get started now in the ground. So things like uh, <clears throat> uh, bush beans, snap peas, uh, cucumber seedlings could go right in the ground. Uh, a few things, carrots, radishes, all sorts of good stuff. So, and also our potatoes and our onions, our seed onions got in the ground this weekend as well. So we're very excited. We are not sure how some of these things are going to turn out. And one of the reasons too that we started some of our seeds early in the ground is because if they fail, <laughs> if they don't sprout and they don't do very well, next month when all the seedlings are out at our local nursery, we can go and pick up a bunch of those if we need to, <clears throat> to take the place of whatever has not started from seedling. I also got my seed trays started. They're in a greenhouse out on our back deck. And I have been keeping the backyard birds well fed, well fed. They are happy little campers right now with the amount of food that I've been putting out there. And one of the reasons that I've been doing that is because I, local birds act as really great natural pest control. I would love to be able to have a very small flock of chickens in my yard. However, my city prohibits backyard chickens and any backyard fowl whatsoever. Uh, unless you're on agricultural land and agricultural land starts one block that way <laughs> Very mad. Um, I would very seriously consider getting a couple of very small hens and just quietly having them in my backyard except the neighbor right behind us is very nosy and doesn't really like us and I know she would absolutely tell on us the first time that she ever hears a chicken so out of the question not gonna happen so I have to settle for the local birds helping in with my pest control whenever possible so what's on the agenda for today seeds and seedlings that we were able to plant are in the ground that is done and ready to go I did a big ADHD fueled rage clean of my house last week and a bit on the weekend. So housework is pretty much caught up. I just have to do litter boxes today. And then um, we are going to do the first brew of a kombucha batch. I got a SCOBY from a local person, uh, less than a five minute drive. I think she's like two kilometers from my house. So the SCOBY is so healthy, good looking in a jar with some kombucha liquid, ready to go. So I need to brew the tea, the sweet tea that's then going to sit all day and cool so that my husband and I can get the first kombucha batch started tonight. So I'm very excited about that. And then 
After that, I have foraged some violets from my yard. I live on a very quiet street, so I'm not overly concerned about um, road pollution, and I do not use pesticides or herbicides on my lawn in any way, shape, or form. And so I am not worried about contamination with that. And I picked them after a really good rain. So that way they were sort of like rinsed off from other things. I gave them a spray down, a little wash before I set them to dry. So I have harvested as many of the violets as I'm gonna get. They are now on their way out. And I am not sure yet what I'm gonna do with the violets. I'm going to spend just a little bit of time researching a couple of recipes that I can do with the amount of violets that I have. I need to sort of measure them out and see how much I have, see how much I can get out of it. And so yeah, I want to do something with the violets today. And I also want to start a sourdough starter. We had one going for a little bit. My husband made a few good loaves and then he sort of lost momentum with it and our sourdough starter fizzled and died. I want to get back into it, however, and keep it going and do it on a more regular basis. So I am going to sort of do my research into how to get a good sourdough starter going and sort of how to maintain it and everything. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think I'm going to start keeping some like sourdough feeder like leftovers as a way to make like just a bit of extra money here and there to sell off some sourdough starter of my own on the side, maybe to people locally, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna think about it and I'm going to kind of let that idea percolate. But yeah, I have some research to do today. I have some thinking to do and I have some brewing to do. So without any further ado, we are gonna get into today's household slow living, homesteady, cottage core kind of vibes of what we're gonna get done. And that means I have to vacate the dog off my lap, sadly. I know you're very sad about that, aren't you? Yes, you are. I know you are. But we're gonna have a good time. And then if time permits later, I'm gonna take her on a W-A-L-K with the B-A-L-L on the chuck it and get her nice and tired later. Fingers crossed I'll have time for that. So, what do you think, Noir? Should we get started? Yeah, <laughs> we should get started. Mwah. You big bye-bye. You big bye-bye. Mm. All right, let's get into it. I have roughly two cups worth of violets that I'm gonna make violet jelly. Apparently this is supposed to taste somewhat similar to grape jelly and I'm very curious about it. So before I do anything I actually have to um, make a tea out of it that infuses overnight. So I am going to get fill up my kettle and get it boiling. The kombucha has now um, like I'm doing the, the tea brew infusion, so it needs to cool. So for several hours, I'm gonna let it cool with the lid on, and then I'll take it off for a little bit just to let more of the heat dissipate. By the time my husband and I are ready to 
do the first brew, uh, like get the first brew ready tonight, it will be, um, it will be cool. It will be room temperature. I'm going to make the sourdough starter. The recipe I'm using said to use whole wheat flour. However, my husband and I both agreed that the last time we did our sourdough starter, we got much better results with rye flour, which is what a lot of people find. So I'm doing a half a cup of flour and then a quarter cup of water. And this is filtered water. And then mixy, mixy, mix. I'm actually going to leave this uncovered for a very short period of time, like 20, 25 minutes, something like that, because I want to capture any wild yeasts that might be out and about in the air and get those in there along with whatever yeasts might be in the uh, flour and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, we're just gonna have to be okay with a little bit of loss here. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit uncovered for like 15, 20 minutes. I just want it to get any wild yeast captured. And then while I'm doing that, um, I'm now gonna take the tea bags out of my kombucha starter and discard those and then pop the lid back on it. It's sitting right here. Let me just adjust so. They are. And this is one reason why I used the slotted spoon to stir in the sugar earlier so that I could use it to take out tea bags after. I did 14 cups of water and one cup of sugar and eight tea bags. I just did Tetley tea. This is controversial, but because I flavor my kombucha, so much with fruit flavors. I actually don't really prefer to use like a really good quality tea for the base. Um, I just use what's cheap and cheerful, which for me is Tetley. And yeah, I still quite like the taste of Tetley. I just uh, see no reason to put like a lot of money into the actual tea for the kombucha because it just ends up tasting like fruit when I'm done. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's that. I finished with all of this stuff a lot faster than I thought I would because I was expecting to um, be doing something with the uh, violets for a little while. I didn't realize I was gonna have to let them steep for a long time. So I'm actually going to pull out some fiber and work on some spinning, I think. I'm, yeah, surprisingly left with a bit of free time while I get this stuff going. And don't mind my very loud cat using the litter box in the background. She always feels the need to be at 50 million decibels every time she takes a simple pee. It's ridiculous. Um, anyways, yeah, I'm going to set up my spinning wheel and some fiber and I'm going to set up a nice cozy little spot to sit and get started on that. So why don't you join me for just a short bit while I work on my wheel.
now the end of the day and I'm now gonna have to edit this thing but I'm very proud with everything that I accomplished today for it being a day off from work I sure did do a lot of work but it was like good creative at home made stuff that I'm proud of kind of work I spun half that braid and I plied it. It's a beautiful two-ply now. And I made this. I just saw a space I'm going to have to go back and sew back over. But that's okay. Um, actually, I might even have to like zigzag stitch it. It didn't quite catch underneath the bias tape. I might just rip that out and redo that part. Anyways finding flaws and stuff I made, but I made this wonderful little drop cloth for my lap. And uh, look, it's already done exactly what I wanted it to do. It has caught fiber 
as I was spinning, I have my roving on my lap and it just, it catches the fiber as you're spinning. And then the fiber, here's some more, goes on to this instead of on your clothing. So especially if you're working with one that sheds a lot, this is a great way to manage it, to keep it under control, which is, which is lovely. So it's just two pieces of plain cotton fabric. I put sheep on this side because it's cute. Brown bias tape and then two lengths of bias tape on either side to act as strings, uh, like ties. If I am going out for the day and I want to take some spinning with me, say I'm going to the guild, I can put my fiber either inside this or I can fold it up and put the fiber in here, roll it up inside there, and then use the ties to tie it shut. I'll probably have, take off a third of the lengths of those ties at some point, cut them longer than I needed to, and yeah, nice little simple drop cloth. Um, it's like a, like a lap apron basically for my spinning, so helps to just keep down the mess. Uh, I did end up making that violet jelly. I cannot wait until tomorrow morning to try it on a piece of toast. I made homemade bread today um, in between because why not? <laughs> uh, sourdough starter is going and yeah, it's been, it's been a good day. But I am now ready to gear down. I'm going to get into my pajamas and I'm probably going to edit this video in bed. <laughs> and I hope that you guys all really enjoyed it. Uh, when this video goes live, it'll be basically in the morning. So if you want to see if I enjoy the violet jelly, I made, I had more than I could fit into my sterilized jars. So I ended up washing an extra jar instead of like a seal and ring and then putting that one in the fridge it did say it could keep in the fridge for up to two weeks uh, or roughly for about two to, to four weeks in as a like instead of like a freezer jam version like a fridge jelly version without the water bath so um, I'm gonna try it tomorrow on a piece of toast and check my Instagram and I'll be able to tell you whether or not I liked it so, thank you so much for joining in today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, you guys know what to do. You're not YouTube dummies here. Give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. Let me know what did you think of some of the things I was making today? What did you think of some of my ideas and goals and all that kind of stuff? I'm, I'm curious. And I'm going to link the bread recipe, the kombucha recipe, and the uh, violet jelly recipes that I used down in the description box in case you are so compelled to try one yourself, I would encourage it. Uh, this is not our first time making kombucha. Um, the scoby I got from a neighbor uh, about a couple kilometers away, not a neighbor, someone from Facebook Marketplace, but you know, someone from my, my city. So. I'm excited to see how this one turns out. I've got some blackberries left over from last year that I think I'm going to flavor it with, so that should be good. All right, I'm gonna stop talking and start editing. Have a wonderful day, guys. Mwah.